I have seen too many people complain about these seats in their Audi TT Mark III and I think I have a solution for the issue that is really common. So hello and welcome again. We are now using this opportunity that the seats are out of the car um, as the body of the car is waiting on some parts to be sent out to the body shop for the repair. In the meantime, I would love to make a couple of short videos on really common issues and this time we are with a super sport seats and the issue is that there is a mounting point on this trim over here and it usually breaks which leads to a gaping hole in this part of the trim so you can see insides of the seat between the, the seat itself and the trim piece. And the idea is to um, show you how to open this seat, how to modify that mounting point if yours isn't broken and if it is how to potentially fix it without having to go to Audi and pay hundreds of whatever currency you are local to or um, if you're out of warranty and you cannot repair it uh, for free. And of course, in the end, I'm going to show you how to put it back together so you don't have to worry about that as well. In order to keep everything short, let's dive right in. As I always do, I'm going to try to keep the amount of tools necessary for the job at minimum. So if you don't have a completely supplied garage, you can also do the job. I need to check this, I think T30 or Torx 30 bit, a extension and a small ratchet will be uh, sufficient for this job. And of course we are going to need a couple of trim removal tools, some metal ones, some plastic ones, so we don't damage anything. And I have already done the other seats, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. At the same time, I really don't because there's so much to um, remember. But the first step is going to be to rip this back uh, cover off. And we are going to start by pulling firmly at the upper, that's not going to work, at the upper section. I think this is going to be a fun video as I'm trying to struggle to uh, find the clips. Let me grab the other piece so we might be able to check out what's going on. So um, I'm going to explain the red strap a bit later. These are the two clips at the upper piece and then we have one, two, three, four, five on each side four in the middle and two at the bottom. So easy peasy, right? Easy, not peasy really, but yeah. With the help of a couple of tools, we're going to try to not break anything in the process because that would make me look really stupid on the video. Uh, let's do another try. There we go. So don't pull at the middle, pull from the sides. Because pulling from the middle actually clips it even firmer in. Just realize that. But once you have the first ones out, just slowly and gently go, uh, go downwards and unclip the rest of those five clips on the side. I hope you can see me doing that. All right, so, I, I mean, only this one was really necessary. So the point with the red strap that I was showing you earlier is that when the airbags deploy, God forbid, um, it prevents this piece if it breaks off of the seat, to fly out into the face of the passengers on the rear bench because, let's face it, there's nobody ever sitting behind you in an Audi TT. 
if it does, if somebody does, yeah, that's what it's for. Um, you should be able to just pull this red strap off. I, however, didn't manage to do that on the last seat, so I had to unscrew the whole mounting point. So it's T30, two screws T30 for um, undoing this. Let me just change the angle and show you what we are talking about. So this is the mounting point and behind this piece of trim of how the cover, upholstery, whatever, they are the two screws. But you can also try to just unwrap this, this red piece over this piece. I haven't successfully done that yet, but maybe you will be able to. And with the patience of a thousand fishermen, I have successfully managed to pull this red piece off of the mounting point without actually needing to unscrew them, just like I did on the first seat. Anyways, you can see that all of those pieces are intact, so there usually isn't a necessity um, to reinforce these parts, but you can use the same technique that I'm going to use for the trim pieces and just reinforce all of those mounting points. There isn't anything uh, bad going to happen if you do that. It just takes a little bit more time, so it's up to you. Now this is where the ratchet comes in really handy. I am already not so fashionable anymore. This is where the ratchet comes in handy. There are two screws holding each trim piece and one is over here. So in this general area where it usually breaks and one is down here. And this is the very important piece of advice since this is a airbag assembly or module or whatever and the problem that I had with the last seat is that you cannot take the screw out because when, once you start unscrewing it, it's hit, it hits the, the metal piece and I had to um, battle it for a good 20 minutes just to get the screw out. So I think for screwing it back in, I'm going to use a different, a smaller screw and maybe a, how do you call it? So now we are going to, of course, just undo the two easy sides so it makes, so I make it look easy on the video. And I mean, the upper points is basically where it usually breaks. I don't know what causes, maybe it's, it's a um, too thin plastic. Can you? Yeah, maybe to get my face out of, yeah. This is the screw, like two centimeters, 20 millimeters long. The lower one is over here, just really easy to reach. And then we are not done with, yeah. So we are going to free the lower part, pull the trim downwards. Just realized you cannot see that side pull the trim downwards and it's free. Nevertheless, we are now going to do the complicated side where you are going to have a much nicer view. Complicated side because airbag is on this side, so this screw is going to give us headaches, as well as we have this piece over he here. But it just goes through, just looks complicated. Maybe instead of ratchets, you can use a really thin, longer T30 uh, screwdriver because honestly, those screws aren't even that tight. Removing the upper, upper one usually isn't a issue. Let's go. Usually, 
there it is, but it's the lower one that requires some sort of witchcraft to get it out because like I said, as soon as you start to undo it, it hits the housing of an airbag and it gets stuck there. So getting it out, I don't really know how I did it the first time. It was some time ago. I really don't want to mess. And you can, cannot actually mess with an airbag first because the screw to undo the airbag is behind the trim. So this is the right uh, way of doing things. It's just a wrong screw. Last time I tried to make sure that the screw goes sideways out. I think because, yeah. This doesn't look promising. There we go. Okay, I think I found the, the hack for this. So undo the screw as long as it goes out, then pull this thing on the side. It's going to bend this trim piece just enough for the screw to go back out. Now that we have that out of the way, uh, didn't sound good, I didn't break anything though. Um, pull the trim piece downwards, a slight issue or pull this thing up um, outwards to pull the strap out. And there we go. Easy peasy. Like I lied in the beginning of the video. So yeah, we are now going to take those two trim pieces. Oh, let me show you. Um, we'll take this one. Um, there are five little clips that are latching onto the back cover. And there are two screwing points or mounting points for the screws that mount this piece to the rest of the seat. This thing is a culprit of most of the complaints of our fellow owners of the Audi TT Mark III as it looks like it can break easily and this is probably what happens. So we are going to go to the laboratory and make sure that that never happens. Sorry, that never happens. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do if you would like to make the same thing. So here we are back at the laboratory. <laughs> Just clean up a bit. So yeah, we are here with the part that we took from the seat. You can probably recognize it. This is the part that goes up. This is the part that usually splits. And those are the clips that hold the back cover. And those two, this one and this one, are the ones that usually break, causing um, this piece of trim to separate from the seat and you know it looks really really bad so what we are going to do today i have already prepared i don't know just how much you can see let me let me try to zoom in so those are the pieces that we are going to you know put in like that the other one on this side and this guy gets three of them, one on each side. Anyway, so yeah, basically just like any other repair that I did, we are going to use a soldering iron and this aluminium mesh just to strengthen these pieces of plastic so they are never going to break. And therefore we are going to prevent this happening ever. And this only costs like a couple of euros for a whole let me just grab it for a whole bunch of that used in a roofing section of Bauhaus in my case or Home Depot or 
BNQ, whatever. And soldering that one, I got it for a couple of bucks. A usual standard soldering iron with a on and off switch and unfortunately no um, temperature control but it's not needed and this is the tip a flattened tip but any tip would basically do the job so we plug it in make sure that it's on we are going to put all of those pieces right here and I'm going to use a small flathead just to hold this piece in place because until the plastic that goes through the mesh does not harden and cool down this piece can move so that's why we need to hold it in place until the, the plastic is cold again then it's set in its place and it's going to stay there forever probably going to do just one piece um, like so filming and then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest as a time-lapse because otherwise it's going to get really long really fast so those two pieces they were here and yeah once I finish installing this mesh I need to make a hole where the screw goes through but that's the easiest part for that I'm probably going to use these small clipping pliers or basically you can just since this is aluminium and it's really soft you can just poke a hole with a screwdriver but yeah, we now need to wait until, let's see, maybe it's already. Okay, so like I said, we're going to hold the piece in place. Let me see what we can do. Try not to, try not to breathe in the fumes coming out. Oh, let's see, it's still cold. Oh, it's working, it is working. We just need to be a bit more patient because it does take some time for a soldering iron to heat up. Then it works like a charm. Like I said, try not to breathe in those fumes that are coming from the molten plastic. I can't tell you if they are toxic or not. I can tell you most probably it's not the best thing in the world to breathe in. There we go, and it stinks really bad. Depending on the type, types of plastic, it stinks differently almost every... Not that it's a valuable information. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to let it go for a second. I'm going to try to zoom in and show you... Let me see what the camera sees. All right, yeah, you can see it right there. So the piece is now in here, and you can see there is nothing on the upper side, other than it's a bit hot. But yeah, that's it. And now, since this is now hardened, we can push it without holding it um, in place into a clip or the other piece, whatever you like to call it. This way it's going to be in there forever. And what I like to do is slowly exhale and like, like you're blowing a candle, really slowly just uh, blow the fumes away from my face. I know it's not the best solution in the world, but it's better than nothing. And this is how long it took me. It's probably much harder to notice where the piece is now because it's covered in plastic. And now, once this solidifies and hardens, there is no way this piece is ever going to fall off. Back to the other side, make sure that that's a bit tricky because this piece isn't actually isn't flat. Let me try to yeah. I'm a bit tired, that's why I don't have the best of ideas at the moment. Alright, now that, that the soldering iron is hot, you clearly see just how much faster it melts through the plastic. Don't forget to blow the fumes away from your face right now. Make sure the whole mesh is welded into the plastic. And then I, what I like to do is iron out 
this plastic in case there is something you know there is something inside of the seat so it doesn't get scratched or damaged um, over time so now let me see the best angle for this That's it. Now we are going to oh, almost burn myself. Trim the excess off. Like I said, we don't have to do it, but I just want to do it in case there is something inside. Let me see just how well we can see that. There we go. That's one of the pieces. One side, one one clip, one side. On the outer side, there is absolutely nothing. You can feel the plastic is hot. That is going to cool down really quickly. So now we can continue doing that on the other side. And for that, I have prepared this piece over here. I have just realized that in my particular case I won't be able to film putting this thing back together after I've modified it because I am going to be sending these pieces along with the rest of the car to be painted and I want to paint those trim pieces in body color so they match the outside of the car just because in the interior of the car there isn't anything um, that's suggesting the outside color and since my color is yellow and really out there I just wanted to make some to, to put some details in the same color inside so if you are planning on just painting those this is the exact same video I can help you as well so basically the installing the trim pieces back inside is the really really simple procedure of putting it back together just by we are going to start with the complicated side which has an airbag and a strap put the strap through the hole then put the upper piece in the slot and once it's in the slot make sure that the strap is all the way through once it's in the slot you need to to slide the whole trim piece upwards a bit and then um, slide it over this side piece and then align it with the screw holes and then just screw it in with two screws that we used to um, that we undone to get it off and that's it and then just yank the rear cover on and basically you're done so it's like a really simple process of sliding this a bit downwards to uninstall and a bit upwards to install pushing the strap through the hole and the pieces out or back in so you know where the holes for the screws are this screw under the airbag is going to be a bit complicated to put back in so you might um, go for a smaller screw and maybe use a pad how do you call it padlock or whatever I don't know um, the name for it just put like a um, metal uh, it is, is it a shim or whatever 
uh, on this mounting piece and use a screw with a smaller head or modify this screw and just grind, grind off a uh, part of its head so it's, it's smaller and it goes easier back um, in the place right next to the airbag. I think I couldn't make it simpler and easier and I hope it's short. So if you'd like this video and would love to see some more things that we modify, repair and do repair on the channel, please make sure to subscribe since there is plenty of you who are still unsubscribed but watch regularly. So please do me a favor as I am trying to make as much content as possible that's helpful and educational on the Audis. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.